listening to Neo Cash Radio. In the studio with you, it's JJ. I've got David Werbel with me once again to give you an update on the progress with Music Economy. Music Economy aims to be the one stop shop for artists, musicians, and fans alike. It's a pleasure to be back. Man. It's, it's good to have you. And, you know, one of my earliest interviews since I started this series. Um, and so it's, it's always good to catch up with you. Now, Music Economy is sort of a broad platform which you aim to cover both the the artists basically and the artists sharing their songs all the way through shows concert venues and then you are also looking at the uh the, the uh um, as what bmi and then ascap um licensing rights and stuff like that a digital right management sort of that sort of stuff is that right that's correct yeah i mean so since we last talked, we, um, I guess the good side of the delays, we've uh, taken some extra time to expand the business plan, really kind of dig much deeper into it, get get le- the legal ducks in a row, um, right. better aligned, you know, with, with all the changes that are happening in the industry. But yeah, I have, I can dig into some of the uh, usage of the token. Yes. that we've expanded so yeah sure. so let me see here it's like i think let me start with highlighting like how we're going to be different you know because there's there's a few other uh platforms that are starting to kind of creep up you know right so, we're seeing that in like all the sectors where there is, yeah. you know, where, where there was once just one, there is now three or four and some of them just copy paste. I, I mean, to, to be honest, so. <laughs> yeah. So, but what's consistent with the ones that we've seen, which not, none of them are operational yet, you know, right uh, from the ones we've seen, it's basically, yeah, we're going to be the Spotify of you know, blockchain, we're just going to be a streaming platform, we're going to be the Apple Music, you know, they're basically just saying, like, one aspect of the music industry. And although we're going to be a streaming platform, you know, with web, mobile and desktop applications, that's just one part of the whole ecosystem that we're building, we're building the entire economy here, right? And, and all the different, uh, ways that artists uh can make money online and offline just in their whole career and that includes like you said um sync licensing and ascap style features right and but what's cool here is that yes this is for the artist in in so many ways but from a user and fan perspective they're going to be able to be part of the fun with all the features that the token is going to unlock. So I'll give you an example of a few of those. Like, so we're going to have an embedded player. So any user can kind of be a booster for song tracks and albums, what, you know, whatever artists they'd like, they can, uh, be a promoter, like a street team for any artist. And when they embed their music player in their own website, when a fan does this, they actually get rewarded for doing that Wow! in tokens. So you're saying that there's, you're going to be streaming music through the, uh, the blockchain through the music economy blockchain. Is that right? Or though? Yeah, that's correct. But, but I, I guess a good visual is, you know, you think about SoundCloud and, you know, anyone can embed the player, but if I, when I grab my embed code from, you know, the membership area, and put it on my website for whatever artist I choose, I actually will get rewarded for that. In addition to the artist, you know, getting streaming revenue. Sure. So yeah, aside from that, um, (laughs) well, that's, I mean, that's, that's incentivizing, obviously it depends on the reward and and, and sort of how much, um, is going into that, but it sort of incentivizes people to, I mean, to, to host these and then not just host one song, but many, many song, many artists, um, uh, go on, but go on. You, you have, yeah, more. yeah that's just one piece, man. That's yeah. just one piece So that. That's the embedded player. Now you think of bloggers. So there's going to be a whole like list of ways that what I just explained can be duplicated. Like if you're just a writer, if you don't want to embed the player on your website, you just want to blog. 
um, it's the same thing. And it it starts with the artist. That the artist, when they upload song, they're going to be able to assign a percentage to what we're calling boosters. We're gonna we'll come up with a nice kitschy name for it in the future. You know, sure. that's uh, <laughs> I think better. We don't like boosters, but that's like well, it's something people know. Title, yeah. J- just so you kind of know what it what it means for now, but um, so yeah. So the artist will be able to assign like, hey, I want to you know assign five percent of all my songs or just this one song to the boosters so that people can go and share. Um, and basically be like a marketing team for them. So, so you're saying that the artist has a certain amount of, uh, like there's a revenue throughput and then they can sort of offset or offshoot some of that throughput, a percentage of it to the boosters or the people that are promoting their content. Absolutely. So okay. yeah. And that decision is, that, so the artist can choose to not do that at all, or they can choose to do that for like 95% of the song if, if they just want like to open it up to thousands of people to help promote them. So may, maybe an artist does that if, if they're not really, if nobody knows about them at all. Maybe they want just to reach out to more people to get the word out. Um, but the better known art, well, you know, I'm not even going to guess what's going to happen. But the point is, is that, you know, that's how it's going to work. Um, okay. Anyway, so yeah, but there's the features, the feature list has been growing. So something I've been uh, pushing for since early on, like the spring was, was the podcasting aspect. And uh, once we, uh, we kind of integrated that uh, in the beta platform at MusicCoin. And what happened there was kind of interesting because, uh, the functionality is already there. It's already going to be there in the database. So we just created a classification in the charting system and in the genre list for podcasting. And so people start uploading their podcasts. And then we started seeing people uploading like stand up comedy clips and wow. <laughs> just like all the, and we're like, and I'm just like, watching this i'm like wait you know that this is kind of what i felt would happen this is going to like open up this whole new world and really like <laughs> so this is audio <laughs> only to triple the size of the database i i don't I, I think it'll double the size of the database that we were first thinking of for just music but when you add podcasting uh feature which is really not much to change in terms of how it's uh programmed in the background Think about you. I mean, you know, the podcasting ecosystem out there, you pay 15 bucks a month to Podbean or even SoundCloud. And how much revenue do you make there? Right. Yeah. Nothing. I, Neocash. No, we yeah. don't make, we have Libsyn as our host and we, we definitely don't make any revenue. But then again, I also don't, I personally don't want to enable third party services to put third party ads on my website or my content because then I don't really have control over those ads. And yeah. I don't want to send a mixed message, especially with a news show that is so uh, we warn people about, you know, this, that or the other thing. And, and we don't want to just have a, uh, a some sort of advertisement for an ICO that we've never even heard of next to my podcast. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. So, Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so that's sort of our art stamp. Now, you, you mentioned, uh, are these being hosted on the blockchain or is there a server or is there like um, how is this how is this all going to be streamed and and, uh, and that sort of thing? Are you talking about podcasting or everything? Just, just the the audio. I mean, you're just you're just covering audio content, right? At this moment. Yes. Okay. So the audio is, is going to be uploaded to somewhere, or is it is it still uploaded? Why would I still upload it to Libsyn and then tell the and then link it to the uh, the blockchain, or how would this work? We're we're about probably four to six months away from like the details on it. Okay. Um, yeah, because we, uh, I guess that, yeah, we can just kind of jump right into the timeline. I think you were wanting to know just about like what's going to happen after the crowd sale, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. get to the crowd sale. Um, what, what, and you know what, let's, we're going to do a timeline after the crowd sale. Let's just get the crowd sale, uh, info right now and talk about that so that we can, uh, just get a good foundation. Um, sure. this, and when, when is it happening? What's the, what's the date and times? 
August 29th at 5 p.m. Central European Standard Time. Okay. Um, and that's the pre-sale. So the pre-sale is going to happen the 29th and the 30th. And that pre-sale is for the music economy community that is already closed right now. That was closed in late July. Okay. Um, and it's also reserved for the co-founded priority pass holders. Right. Um, and then... And so this whole thing yeah. is happening on co-founded, right? What, what do you mean on co-founded? I mean, co-founded is, is running it. Is it... Uh, like, is it being run through the co-founded platform, or, or is this? Um, I, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to understand this. That's all. No, that's fine. Yeah, we like co-founded as our partner, so okay. they're a they're a distributed venture capitalist uh, company project blockchain project. Sure. And what they do is they they facilitate the entire process from the beginning. Um, so they set up. Uh, they help you with legal, just organization, even marketing and project management and everything. Um, and then, yes, they're they're basically, you know, <laughs> organizing the whole crowd sale process. And um, the priority pass system is is pretty interesting. So, co-founded is. They were added to the exchanges a few months ago. I mean, they did their own crowd sale in the spring and uh, it's f successful. I think they raised 15 million in like a couple days and hit their cap. And then we were the second project that they chose, um, which is cool. So it was kind of like validation that we were <laughs> on to something cool here. And now they have a handful of others coming after us in uh, September and October. Right. And the way it works is you have to buy 5,000 tokens of co-founded, which is CFI on the exchanges. You have to buy 5,000 tokens, you have to hold them, and then you become, you register to become a priority pass member, and then when a crowd sale comes up, like at the end of August for Music Economy, you you get priority access before the public sale by being having a priority pass. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, okay. that makes sense. But this is actually on. Are you still using the the Music Coin blockchain? Is this built on top of that? No. We, so this, yeah, this was like a two month deliberation on this. Is a uh, we're going to be building on the Ethereum blockchain. Wow. Yeah. What a change. Wow. So yeah. You're, you're, that's, that's huge. I mean, you were talking, I mean, the music, music coin blockchain is still operating, right? I mean, people are still, so yes. yes. mean, it's still, you know, functioning, moving right along. And so you're sort of the music economy. When we, when we last talked music economy was, uh, basically you were going to do a token on top of music coin. Uh, right. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you, um, you're now switching over to to an ERC twenty uh, compatible token. I'm imagining. Correct. Yeah. Wow. So that's. I mean, that's sort of the way things are going. So so basically, you're going to have. Um, okay. So so that's that's the priority pass and the the pre sale. But during the actual ICO or the actual uh, token uh, sale, is that going to happen on the Ethereum blockchain? Is there going to be like an Ethereum address that people are going to donate yes. to? Okay. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Let, let me say a quick word on that. That was, you know, it, it honestly we went back and forth on this for like two months. Um, what to build on. It was uh, it gives us the most freedom moving forward for partnerships, because when you really break down our business plan, you talk about like um, licensing partners and, you know, uh, ticketing ticket master style system. Right. That, that's the other piece we forgot to mention. Um, and all, all the labels we're working with, and we're having a lot of conversations with different blockchain companies. And as we're talking about it and thinking it through, like more than half the time, we're like, actually, this would not work like on the music coin blockchain. So it, we're kind of really like on the fence on it for a while, but it, it gives us more freedom. 
And again, this is not a 100% final decision. It's like, you know, most likely type of right. situation. But yeah, we, the, just main, the main lot. thing to say here is like, we, we have to do what's best, you know, for the platform right. and for the users and for the artists. Like it's not, it's not just a personal taste type of thing. It's, we have to do what's best for the project. Um, well, and there's a lot of, you know, with, with Ethereum being so uh, often the go-to blockchain for these sorts of projects, it's sort of, uh, you know, not only these, I say these sorts of projects, like there's a lot of people trying to do what you're doing, which is not necessarily true. Uh, but the, a lot of these large multifaceted projects, they're getting, you know, the Ethereum sort of uh, community and the, the sort of brain space that is in the Ethereum space. It's, it's, there's a lot of resources, a lot of people, a lot of smarts, and a lot of different things you can reference. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. It's, it seems like it'd be a really easy space to, to build off of uh, so many wonderful open source ideas. Absolutely. So, Let's talk about the uh, okay. Let's just talk about the token sale now. You're, you're selling the uh, for now. We'll just say that uh, it's on the Ethereum platform. And if things change, I'm sure there uh, will be updates for all all parties that are interested to find out. But, yeah, we're working on a blog post just just for this issue. It should be coming out in a couple days. Excellent. So uh, and then, and then you, what's what's your so what's your total funding? What's the total tokens that you're going to have out there? Uh, what's what's those numbers? All right, so total uh, tokens in circulation will be a hundred million. Okay. Um, this crowd sale, uh, the, we're only doing twenty-five million in this crowd sale. Okay, and that includes the pre-sale. That includes the pre-sale, and the soft cap is three million dollars, and the hard cap is six million dollars. Okay. Wow. So. All right. What do you think, JJ? I mean, Three million dollars—that's uh, that's not a lot of funding uh, by today's standards. I mean, we have people that are raising, you know, a quarter of a billion dollars on a project. Yeah, that's true. But it, I mean, it's refreshing to see a more measured um, amount, you know, the more, more measured uh, stance, I should say. Yeah, so, JJ. I mean, we're legit, man. Seriously, like we, well, we we're also vesting our team tokens, so like we don't. I mean, not everyone does that. Um, we're not like the team's not just kind of doing a cash grab like right sure. after this. I mean, the, you know, we're sure. vesting for like uh, 18 months. So, so. How, how long is the crowd sale going to go on? I mean, what, what, if, if, if it took the maximum amount of time, how many days is that or how much time? Uh, technically, the, <laughs> the public sale is 30 days. Okay. But it, yeah. It's, but you, uh, you have such low limits. It's 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 going to be like, pretty short, man. Yeah, yeah. It should. Um, okay, and then after that, so it's the is it going to be M MCI token? Is that is that sort of your um, your label you're going for? Yes. Okay. And so the MCI token and that will all be happening. What date again? Uh yeah. So the presale is August. That? What's that? Yeah, the presale is August twenty fifth. You said. 29th. 29th, I'm sorry. And then what's the actual date of the start of the uh, public sale? Public sale starts the 31st at 5 p.m. Central European Standard Time. And technically, it's set to run 30 days. Right. Uh, but if you're interested in taking part, yeah, um, yeah I, would, uh, so, I would do that on day one. It, it's going to be short, I'm telling you. Excellent. Well, I, I mean, it's it sounds like you you have a, a, a ambitious plan, and I really like this embedded player idea as a way to link uh, blockchains to the outside sort of blogosphere and social media sphere. And then, in, in in some cases, people might not even know they're using a blockchain. Now, my one question about these players is: is there any sort of like does someone have to pay for a play, or is it just like any other streaming where you just hit the play button? Yeah, so it, it's we still have the pay per play uh, system that's going to be integrated in inside of this. So um, we're talking about actually integrating like a, a monthly subscription using uh, fiat or different currencies. Um, okay. Yeah, just to kind of open it up more, but as whether you're an artist. Uh, 
a user or a fan or whatever, like everyone can earn rewards in this ecosystem. And it, it almost sounds like unrealistic that how I mean, that could I mean, work, you know? Yeah. I mean, how, how does that work? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if yeah, it's like, well, somebody has to pay at some point, right? Where, I mean, where yes, do these rewards come true. from? Yes. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, you start with like the Spotify model. You know, that, that's all it is. Like, I, th I think they have like 50 or 60 million uh, paid subscribers at this point that are paying 10 bucks a month. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that's where it all starts. Yeah. OK. I mean, um, if you build it. Yes. Yeah, so if you build off a, a subscriber, you know, you start, you have that foundation of subscribers. And, and then I'm sure you, you can find ways to uh, to, you know, have certain amounts of profit or, or whatnot spread around and, and rewarding people and, and incentivizing people to continue using the product. Yeah. But JJ, you think about like licensing and our and the partnerships that we're already setting up right now that that's like you know, separate revenue coming in um, for the artists that are not attached to the paper play system. So there, you know, there's going to be a lot of facets to the ecosystem um, for revenue streams here. Um, but uh, in addition to that, it's, uh, yeah, I just want to say this. It, it's like uh, people have been conditioned by basically like a handful of billionaires uh that the way the old paradigm of the industry works like they they were conditioned to believe that's the way it like that's the right way or that's a fair way or something sure. and a very small amount of people are basically like taking all the money okay you know? right. so in with the new paradigm and what the blockchain enables here is removal of all the worthless intermediaries so that like br brings new revenue into the ecosystem into the economy in so many different ways and that so at first it's like wait how could this work but the way it works now is what is so disturbing okay you know, and uh, I know that might not make sense for people like at first, but you well, guys will see. You well, guys I mean, will see. You, you yeah. can easily, I mean, sort of, you could say the same thing about the current fiat system. I mean, if you look at sure. uh, venture yeah. capital funding through fiat versus venture capital funding through the blockchain, I mean, we've already passed the point this year alone where uh, companies have projects have earned more money through blockchain venture capital than they have through traditional VCs. And with all the fiat printing and all the f money just floating and just ebbing through the economies, uh, it's a pretty good feat. It is. Absolutely. So let's talk a uh, little bit here. We'll, we'll just talk about the, the after the crowd sale roadmap and wrap it up here. What's so, so the crowd sale is done. And you're happy, and and everyone's the you know, funding is there, and all the things are ready to go, and it's go time. What's what's next for for music economy? <sighs> Pack up the car and drive to Mexico, right, man? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, it's we're we're going to take a break for a few days, uh, take a breather. <laughs> a couple of us are going to go camping, just uh, turn our phones off. It's been. It's not been easy the past few months, man. It's it's been pretty stressful uh, working seven days a week on this, like our whole team. Um, but anyway, the in terms of like an alpha uh, version of the of the platform, we're looking at like early twenty eighteen. Okay. Um, and then you know beta a month or two later, and then you know second quarter. Um, you know, the full launch of the platform uh, with all the features that we're uh, talking about. And all of the, like the full feature platform, it, it'll kind of go in stages uh, throughout 2018. Um, but partnerships will be in the works like right away. Um, we're not gonna just like disappear. You're gonna see us on social media updating people on everything that's going on and also this brainchild i've been giving birth to in the background the past couple months is uh music economy tv 
Wow. I mean, that, yeah, that's my background. And it was initially, I was thinking it was just going to be like one show. Um, but it's turning into a network now with multiple shows. And I'm already getting, you know, sh new programming concepts submitted to me in the background. And I'm like, whoa, th this is going to be awesome. So what that's going to be, it's like serial programming, but also live streaming. Um, because I've been doing that for the past couple of years and it's with my indie music plus, uh, business, we have this show called indie music live and we feature and interview and critique artists. And, uh, it's like an hour show. We do it every week. So we're going to kind of expand off of that and do showcases um, as a live stream and produce it like television style and start to plug into some cable networks and nice. it's going to be fun. I mean, yeah, cause I, I was, I was a producer at a company called next star broadcasting. And, uh, so that's, that's a big part of my background is, uh, producing television and just like all types of media content and then live streaming now with a production team you can do like a television style show pretty inexpensively right. and it it archives to youtube automatically afterwards so we you know we push live to facebook live uh, periscope and youtube simultaneously and if it's produced well you there's no like post-production afterwards yeah and uh that's kind of how we do the any music live show and that's how we're going to do, you know, future showcases where it's, you know, different band in different cities uh, oh. all over the world. Excellent. We'll, yeah, they'll play a couple songs. We'll do a commercial. We'll play some more songs in the, you know, there'll be a band in London, band in Sydney, band in New York, all in wow. one show. And it's just like an offline showcase, you know, but we'll do those too. We're going to do offline showcases as well and sponsor bands and, uh, you know, go to events and sounds like you have a lot on your plate. Looking, oh, up. dude, I'm excited, dog. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm probably not going to take much of a break. I'll, I'll probably take a day or two off after the crowds. I, I just want to. I want to get to building the platform, dude. That that's what really excites me. Yeah, you know, excellent. Well, okay. So, where what are some of these URLs that you can share for us? First of all, what they uh, to start out, we'll get to the the music economy. What, how do they get in touch with you? Or they find your website. Yeah, so musiconomy.com and it's M U S I C O N O M I dot com. Um, we're all over social. It's the same handle at Musiconomy, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Slack. All the links are at, at the website. Sure. And then the if they wanted to participate in the pre sale, uh, we're, is that also on your website? Is that all, all the yes. information? Okay. So yeah. basically one-stop shop at your website. Um, and then is that, so that's it. We'll just, that's the only link you really want to share. Any listeners who want to take part in the pre-sale before the public sale, you can still, you can still be a part of that by uh, becoming a priority pass member at co-found it. So you still have a few days to do that. And the public, I, you know, I, I'm just telling you, JJ, the public sale is going to be very short. So yeah. if, yeah, if someone's, if anyone is like really interested in taking part in this crowd sale, I would, I would do it right now through, uh, uh, co-found it. Well, thank you for that, David. Uh, thank you again for coming on the show. I look forward to seeing how this all works out. And I really look forward to seeing, uh, wow, some of these grander, uh, visions, uh, visionary, uh, yeah. items that you've come up with. So, uh, thank you so much for joining me. I, my pleasure, man. I have a group of over 50 old ladies standing outside my door right now waiting to hear about the show. They're excited. I'm excited. Always a pleasure. You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Tune in to NeoCashRadio.com.